Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're checking out some Lucy who is kind of like a throwback. We used to check out K-Bands here on the channel all the time, like weekly it seemed, and got a lot of requests for them, but it's been quite a bit. And I remember Lucy was always one of those groups, watched a bunch of them over uh, on Patreon and Fourth Wall on Superband, which was such a damn cool show. I don't even know if that ever had a season three, but the performances on it are awesome. Lucy featured in a lot of those. We're gonna be checking out their comeback from August of this year. This was requested by Lunoki. That song is called Haze. And then I wanted to do their newest one that they just dropped last week, which is called Boogeyman. So it's been a, a, a bit since I've heard something new from them personally. I don't know what the last thing I reacted to was. Mm, I can't remember, but they made it on my best of list once before as well uh, for the year. I think like 2021. Let's go, Haze. Already digging this music video. Whoa, the crash of this song, it just starts off with a bang. I remember the the guitarist, the vocalist is Sangyup and Yechan is the leader and the violinist. I don't know the other members. Siori feels very nostalgic. Oh, they're trying to just hit you right in the emotion with this song. Oh, God, I love when his voice starts to really get there. He projects a lot of raw emotion. Ooh. I loved how this transition sound. Wow, this is five minutes long. We're telling a whole damn story here, but musically, love it. God, those vocals were crazy. Oh, I love these little interstitial bits after the chorus like they played last time. It feels very nostalgic to me. Wow, this is a really well-made video.
Whoa, that was such a great video. That was an incredible song. <sighs> There's something about the K-Band MVs, man, that make you more emotional than like most reactions that I do with this kind of stuff with K-pop in general ever, ever can really um, bring out sometimes. But Lucy's done it. Man, One We, they have songs that have absolutely done it. Hoppy Paula has music videos that really, uh, I think it's called Enough, right? Just so well made and very emotional. And this is right up there with them. I love it so much. And it's a type of music video that elevates the song and becomes so like intrinsically bound with it. Um, that you always think of the emotion of the MV as like you even hear the song separate from it. Whoa, this was so good. So it really seemed to be uh, less about, I thought it was going to be um, about a relationship as most K-pop things are, maybe in a nostalgic lens of looking back on childhood years, but it really did seem about like just general obstacles that all different people have in adolescence, I guess, and whatever they might be, whether bullying, uh, you know, uh, athletics, or even academics. And I thought that showing that it was like not meant to be nostalgic, as of like, it's more looking at like a piece of time, I think. And maybe just the way that a lot of the scenes were lit felt very looking back to me. But it seems to be like not looking at it in a down way of the obstacles, but more of like the, the celebration of like growth to surmount them. That's why this feels like a very positive song to me. You can tell in his in his voice. Oof. And Yechan threw out that smiling like crazy while playing the violin. What's up? Oh, well, um. Someone explain to me what the hell that was at the end. I'm sure that was teasing something or some kind of release, but wow, that was weird. <laughs> uh, super sentimental video. Even just some of these gorgeous shots, like when he holds him up, like bearing him like a cross on his back so he can feel the rain is crazy. I love it. Oh, man. Uh, special... Special video, special song. I wanted to hear. Uh, I was looking for a specific part. Oh. Hold on a second. I actually want to roll this back. I really want to see that wide shot when they get onto the rooftop. Ah, okay. That's what I was thinking. The roof was rain slicked, but it's the extension of her torn up papers. A lot of this echoing stuff feels very much like indie pop from like the late 2000s, early 2010s. And then that little interstitial part feels so emo to me. So like, are these the papers then? I don't know what that's supposed to be. I think so. Mm, this. Oh, what a good ass song. Yeah, I really did love that one. 
So very good. Now, I saw just a little bit, just a little bit of Boogeyman, and I know we're going to have to change expectations because I think this one is meant to be more fun, uh, not nearly as like emotional or sentimental or like theatrical like that was. Uh, so switching modes, this is their most recent release. This came out like about a week ago. Boogeyman. And I think we're going to actually be boogieing. By the way, in terms of like opening stingers, like opening splash screens for labels, like who has the best? Because Mystic Story is up there, man. They're way up there. Ah, here we go. So it is really connected. Oh! This is so different. This sounds so sick and so different. Again, this came out like nine days ago. Why is everyone coming up with songs like this that are perfect for Halloween and they always miss Halloween? Always. There's a spooky vibe in the instrumental of this song for sure at points. This is such a different direction from what we just listened to. This is really pushing the the pop version, the pop side, so much more. Ooh. But the the aesthetic, the aesthetic is so like theatrically like pseudo gothic in some ways. It really reminds me of like the the quirkiness and like this kind of goth emo inspiration of like uh, there's a band that started around where I grew up from called Matchbook Romance that this feels like adjacent to their music in a weird way. Nobody is gonna know who Matchbook Romance is. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> They're on MTV. <laughs> I'm really liking this change in aesthetic of just how very different it is. It's really going for something. Oh, I love the volume. Now it sounds like the music from a Castlevania game. The previous song I'm going to be listening to way more because it hits you in a different way, but man. I love how bold they went with this. Because this song does sound like it has a Halloween angle to it, it totally does, that this feels like something I, I have to be very much in a particular mood for because it has like that bouncy, spooky 
I don't know, cadence to the music in some ways. So I do like it, and I think that it's crazy that they went in a direction like this after something like Haze, which is so very different. I'm going to be coming back for Haze way more just because that whole package is crazy good from the video to the song. An emotional K-Band song, always going to get me. But Boogeyman is pretty fun too. Um, uh, it seems like it would also be something that's really cool live with the energy that it has. But yeah, that was some catch-up on some newer Lucy. Thank you so much, Linoki, for the request. Thank you guys for watching with me. Subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you next time.